Hi, I'm Chris from ASIC Software, and in this video we're going to be looking at testing um, things inside Symfony. So, when you first download Symfony, you get uh, a basic test that's already pre-configured for you. It's the default controller test, and this test is pretty much set up to do something very basic, but something that actually builds on top of PHP unit. And the main thing is, looking at this is kind of, if you don't understand what PHP unit is doing underneath, this stuff um, is not the easiest to get your head around to begin with. So, before we start any of this, just be aware that that exists, and also this file exists, and then we will take a quick look at how this all fits together. Now, whilst Symfony does come with the PHP unit tests, uh, or a test pre-configured for you, PHP unit itself is not a dependency uh, from as part of Symfony. So you will need to either add this in, so there's like two ways of, of getting PHP unit to work on your machine. You can either add this in here into your composer.json and the good thing about doing that is if you go to something like Packagist, uh, you can choose the specific version of PHP unit that you want. So like I think it's at four or something now. Um, so you could you could stick that in there, like copy that in there, and then just stick that. Uh, obviously, you would remove that one. But then you could have the very latest and greatest. Now, if you're using um, like Ubuntu or whatever, uh, if you do, if you try and just do PHP unit, especially if you've been following along with the tutorials that I've been doing, uh, you'll get this where it says "Please install like using sudo apt get." Um, if you do that, which is fine. And that's kind of the way I've always done it, but you don't get the sort of granularity of choice as to which version you get. So you're going to get the one that uh, the Ubuntu guys have decided is the latest version, which I think is like 3.7.30 at the moment. Uh, not that it really matters at all, I guess, but if you want more granularity, do it like that. And the problem is if you do it like that, then you're gonna to have to use some syntax a bit like that because it's gonna have gone into your slash vendor directory, PHP unit, PHP unit, there exactly, and that's kinda of like there. So yeah, you might just wanna do using that one. But for now, I, on this tutorial, I haven't, but perhaps just stick with that, whatever, whatever suits you. But just be aware that what's happening here is it's going into the, the vendor folder, and then it's going into PHP unit, PHP unit, uh, PHP unit, I think, where is it? Uh, no, no, sorry, it's just running in that one there. So that's that's basically what's happening there. And if you just do the normal thing, then it just runs as is. And then this bit after it is saying, get the config file from the app directory, which is this file that I mentioned before, the PHP unit XML dist. So then it, it gets all the settings from there, so you don't need to do sort of a lot of the setup that you might normally do if you were installing PHP unit manually. And then this just adds in some stuff like make sure that you get a nice colourful output, so like red on failure, green on good. Uh, and then you can change some of this. I probably wouldn't change too much, but stop on failure. You might want to set that to true if you have like a massive test suite and you can't be bothered waiting for the entire thing to finish. Uh, you just want to start hacking up the failures that happen and then other stuff that it's doing in here for example is it's just looking in any sort of bundled directory uh, and yeah source whatever bundle whatever bundle so it's just typical symphony stuff source whatever whatever bundle exactly so that's basically what's happening there just so that you're aware and let's get looking at what else is there so yeah php unit if you've you probably have heard of it otherwise you wouldn't be looking at this video i'd imagine but um, we're going to start off with in fact let's just get rid of that it's going to start off with a very basic test which i have blue petered uh where are we so yeah that obviously won't be there on yours but i had to hide it to stop the confusion um so the the general setup of this would be you would have the the sort of the like the de facto standard of using php unit is whatever you have in your bundle, like the root of your bundle, you would also match it up to a similar thing in the test. So like I've got a service directory here, and so I've created a service like test slash service here. Now I've not actually created the, the file itself at the moment because we don't need to at this point, and 
that will just serve probably to confuse you a little bit more um, now either way whatever you've done you're going to need to make sure that you've got access to this slash php unit underscore framework underscore test case otherwise all the method names are not going to be available to you so um, as I did it through the vendors what I did is just copied across the PHP unit so that's why I've got access to it there okay so if we let's just see actually I'll just shift that back just quickly and do a quick run of the test suite as it is let's just make sure that that's gone across wrong one whatever so yeah, out of the box, you get the one test with the one asser assertion and it's passing at the moment. So that's why you get the green bar. And the reason that is, is because we've got this. Now the convention is um, all your tests need to end in test, otherwise they won't run. And also um, the name obviously needs to match up. And all your tests have to be public and they all have to start with test like that. So that's the convention that it has to follow, otherwise it just won't even see your tests. Uh, but we don't want this one anyway, so let's get rid of that. And then rerun it. So we've got no tests at the moment, which is great. And then we're just gonna drag that back from there because that's what we wanna do. So we have our set of tests, and at the moment there is just like I think it's nine tests there that are just set up, but there's nothing in them, but it will still pass, which is kind of weird because, oh sorry, eight, whatever. Um, yeah, it's saying that basically there's eight tests run. There's no assertions in any of them, but it sees that as good, which I don't know whether, like I personally would just dish out a yellow bar there, but I didn't invent it, so whatever. Um, and then if you've not used this before in any, or you, you're kind of unsure about it, um, if we just go to phpunit.de and then go to read the docs, I'm going to try the multi-page one. It's all changed a little bit this lately, but then you've got all these assertions, and basically all an assertion is, if you've never heard of them, um, is just a way of checking that the output is as you expect it. So like, there's all these different ones. Some of them you never use, <coughs> excuse me, and then some of them you'll use all the time, like assert true, assert false, where is it, assert true, like assert false, assert equals, uh, and then others you'll use like less frequently, but you still use them like a certain instance of. So it's like checking that something's a class of whatever you're expecting. So yeah, I'm just going to show some basic ones here, and some of the ones aren't listed as well. So the the way that you do it is just this assert um, and then true, and then obviously true is true. But you would probably have some like maths that's going on there or whatever whatever happens in your uh, in your service or whatever you're testing it's probably going to be able to dish out uh, um, well obviously if you're using like testing for truth then whatever you're doing is probably going to drop out some either true or false boolean um, so that's basically what that's doing I would run that excuse me oh god of, of all times to have a coughing fit it's like middle of your video um, yeah and then again, it's like pretty basic stuff. This, assert false, false, whatever. And then assert equals. Uh, and then like whatever. Um, so yeah, this one you get expected and actual. So sometimes you might just do it like this. Expected and actual. So expected equals like four and uh, actual equals oops three plus one and then so if we do this so this is this bit's like um what you would probably see in the in, as you're going through it you, you, this expected an actual syntax um yeah the the result you're expecting and then the result that you actually get and then again instance of so we'll do a new class so I'll call it class there's new standard class. No, it's not liking that. Uh, whatever. And then we'll do a this. Uh, so it's off. Yep. And then so it's expecting, and then sometimes it's just easier to go on to a new line. So it's expecting an instance of. 
standard class. And then we're giving it a class. So you might want to just call like this, like actual. Oh, don't put that in there. Um, and yeah, so we can just do a quick control P there. And what that's going to do is tell us that we're, the first thing is the expected. And the second thing is the actual. So in this case, we're expecting standard class. We're getting a standard class, otherwise that would fail. So we could assert that that was actually a, whatever, a chimp. And this should now fail because like it's expecting a instance of standard class, uh, sorry, it's expecting an instance of chimp, but it's getting a standard class. Uh, sometimes you get better errors than that. Sometimes it will, uh, something, yeah, I don't know, not a good one, not a great error message. So yeah. And then other ones like, I'll just pause the video and finish these off. Yeah, so I'll just finish these off just quickly so you don't want to watch. Uh, we just set up an array and then we're saying that our array contains, we are certain that our array contains a number two, so in two in that array. Similar, this one array does not contain, so we're saying three is not in this array. Now this is, I wanted to show you this one because if you go on here, um, assert contains is there, but assert not contains is not. And some of these are only really found if you actually go into each one and then see um, like that a certain not contains is the inverse. Uh, God only knows why they don't just list them just to, I don't know, mess with your head or whatever. Especially when you're busy developing and you're like, why is that just not there? Anyway, uh, and then you've got like test is null, a certain null, and test is not null. And then that's just an instance of standard class. So if we run that through where all tests are passing, which is good. So the reason I wanted to show you these ones, they're like the very basic ones straight away, is because again, like anything in development, stuff builds on the basics, and this is, you know, obviously the basics. So in the next video, we'll be looking at, um, like, here this this test, for example, right? This is what we'll cover in the next one. Say you wanted to test that equals. Um, in fact, I'll just cover it now very quickly. If you wanted to test like the expected outcome for and then there's other ways that you can equal four, like one, one plus three, and then two plus two, etc. Or you know you could even do multiplication or whatever. Um, but you don't want to end up in a situation where you're doing like this. So like test equals two, and then you're doing like two plus two or whatever, and then another test. So like test equals three, and then you know four, whatever, uh, two times two, for example. And so you've got these three tests which are the same. But, you know, uh, you've still got the test passing and you're getting these 10 tests, 10 assertions, but you've got this duplication and that's no use to anybody because obviously duplication sucks. So we'll get rid of these. And what you would actually do in this case is use what's called a data provider. Now, me being me, if you ever watch any of my videos, you realize that syntax is not my strong point. I have a memory like a sieve. Uh, so we'll just quickly look for the data provider syntax and we get the provider uh, let's do that i normally put the provider above i'll go through this in a sec and then we want the data provider bit as well uh, where were we this one uh yeah so what this is saying is i will call this um, my provider just so that this looks different uh, my provider what this is doing is um actually i think i need to put in yeah uh, the expected value one, value two. So what we're going to do here is pass in an array, or it's yeah, this, this is kind of weird. This why I might have done it in a separate video, but whatever, I didn't. So we'll just change this up a little bit. So it's value one plus value two. And then we're getting our expected passed in as a parameter. So at this point, what this will do is when the test run, and we'll just run it now to prove that it passes, um, uh, sorry, fails even. Yeah, we're getting the data sets passing in and it's all, all going a bit pear-shaped, but bizarrely some of them are passing because um, certain stuff adds up or whatever. I'm sure some of them are passing there. Two failures, but we, yeah, whatever, naught plus naught, yeah. Okay, so yeah, two of them are actually passing that one and that one because zero plus zero equals zero, one plus zero equals one. So that's why uh, two of them pass. Anyway, yeah, what this is doing is you pass in an array uh, and each array is like a different test. So like that's test one, t 
test two, test three, whatever, uh, and then it will match up exactly. So it's expected value one and value two, sorry. And so what you want to do is like you can just test different combinations there. Obviously, um, like we can now even have different equals. So like uh, one equals one plus zero. That's a bit of a terrible example. I'll just do that. Um, and then like three equals two plus one, and four, two plus two, and five. And yeah, do two and three, whatever. And so now when we run this, it should all pass and you're getting that extra test. Like before we were just, we copied it out three times this time. We got four tests, um, but we didn't need to duplicate the method four times. So again, just to very quickly go through what's going on there, because that's really cool in my opinion. Um, and it, it's one of the things that perhaps if you don't read the docs, uh, you know, I guess some of us don't like reading documentation. That's probably why you're watching YouTube videos. But um, yeah, you might have missed out on this. And basically, it's this at data provider. Give it the method name. So again, remember you can you can call this anything, anything, whatever. And then just make sure this one matches up. And yeah, uh, what's going on there? Didn't like that. It doesn't like that at all. Let's give that a different name then. Lame. And lame. Weird. Don't know. Don't know why. Didn't like that. But yeah. Uh, this is kind of horrible looking. So it's returning an array of arrays. Uh, but yeah, just copy it from the docs. So yeah, that's that's the gist of PHP unit. And in the next videos, we will be looking at actually making something a little bit more interesting with this. So hopefully you've learned something and uh, see you in the next video.